Is there anybody here who thinks that I would be safe sitting in that chair or that chair? When they're trying to make policy and make decisions, uh, Mr. Rocco just votes no. He's contrary. He lashes out. So now I get to choose between either thug number one or thug number two. So who wins? My guess is thug number two. He's had a big impact in the sense that he's interfered with the board's ability to do their business. Kim, I thought you were better than that. Snappy, snappy, snappy. This thing was a drag. Main part of his agenda seems to be to want to talk about this partnership of people that he feels are after him and that are corrupting Orange County. The story slipped through the cracks. If you heard the conversations within the register, there's been considerable concern and discussion about how the story uh, did fall through the cracks. You have spent 22 months making political remarks, placing dolls, Coke bottles, signs, and pictures before you on the dais, and making a mockery out of being a board member. Mr. Rocco, most people in the community think that you're crazy, but you're unprofessional, and in most cases, you are wrong. In terms of education policies and that which we do on a regular basis to ensure that our kids get a quality education, Mr. Rocco has not really participated in my view. I made it a point from the very first time I was elected not to go to closed sessions so I could tell you the truth. So nobody could hold me back. Why didn't you interview my uh, investigator, register person? Mr. Rocco, if you can stay on to the item at hand about the, the board item. bylaws. The item. We care about our employees. We care about our community. We are done dealing with this kind of behavior, and I'm hopeful that Mr. Rocco will choose his words more carefully when he is in public session and doesn't breach this violation. This is Kim Nichols. She is the president of the Orange Unified School Board in the city of Orange, California. Ms. Nichols is furious. So are many residents of the community. The source of their anger is Steve Rocco, He's the man in the blue knit cap and dark sunglasses. Mr. Rocco was elected to the school board in November of 2004, despite the fact that he never attended a school board meeting, never campaigned, and never showed up to any candidate forums. He was unknown to teachers and the district, and only barely known to his neighbors, an unemployed recluse who lived with his elderly parents. His father has since died. But now as one of seven trustees, he oversees a district with 31,000 students and a $250 million budget. I'm not sure anybody can say who Steve Rocco is. We're all still wondering. Uh, Steve Rocco uh, had run against Mayor Miguel Polito in Santa Ana, and uh, I believe in 2000, and had lost. He then decided to run against me in 2002, uh, and he lost to me. I was the incumbent. I think he ran against Polito in 2004, uh, and then in 2006, he ran against me again, and he lost again. So how did Mr. Rocco get elected anyway? A few months before the election, Mr. Rocco left his home that he shares with his bedridden mother and rode his bicycle down to the registrar of voters. He filled out a single-page form, the only requirement to become a candidate. Unlike most other local races, he did not have to gather any signatures or pay a modest filing fee. On the form, he wrote that he was a teacher, although he had not taught full-time for more than 20 years. Phil Martinez ran for the same seat. He was a PTA president and had three kids in the district and actively campaigned. He listed his occupation as park ranger. Knowing little about the race when most voters came to the end of the lengthy ballot, they selected Rocco, the teacher over Martinez, the park ranger. Rocco received 24,000 votes, 54% of the 46,000 cast. That was my first time running for school board. And the reason why I ran is because I have three kids in the district. At the time, I, they were all pretty much in elementary school and junior high. And I wanted to make sure that, uh, that everything was in place for these kids, not just my kids, but all kids, do what's right for them. People in 2004 knew they were going to vote for the presidential candidates. They may have known some people on the city council, their state legislators, some of the propositions. And then I think a great majority of them got down to the to this Orange School Board and saw in this one seat, they saw Phil Martinez, uh, Park Ranger, versus uh, Steve Rocco, teacher. Uh, and I think for most people who voted and knew nothing else, 
Let's see. Park ranger, educator. This is easy. We're going to vote for the educator. People have come up to me uh, when they see me in the market, and I say, I'm Phil Martinez, and uh, you know, some people say, hey, you know, you're the guy who ran for a school board. I say, yes, I did. He goes, you know, I, uh, I didn't vote for you. I voted for the other gentleman only because the title said teacher. And uh, now that I know about this gentleman, I would never have voted for him. The story of Rocco's surprise victory drew the attention of national media, such as USA Today, NBC's The Today Show, and National Public Radio. Hey, I'm Alex Chadwick. More on politics now, though at a different level. The city of Orange, California, has a surprise winner in local school board elections, Steve Rocco. The question should be, not as who is Rocco, but what is the partnership? This, this mentions at least 20 to 30 partnership members. This is an expose, not a manifesto. Expose is a French word, not a Russian word. We will look at the consequences of Mr. Rocco's election in a minute. But first, let's take a closer look at who he is. One source of information about Mr. Rocco is his rambling, self-published autobiography. In it, Mr. Rocco describes how he was arrested for stealing a package of sausages and four rolls of Kodak film in 1980 from an Albertsons supermarket. Since that fateful day, Rocco says Albertsons is part of a sinister organization called The Partnership. He says The Partnership includes prominent political leaders and is responsible for widespread corruption and murder. The Partnership, he alleges, murdered his father and several times has tried to kill him. I'm against drugs, and I probably have lost more uh, to the drug situation than anybody else. I've lost relatives, I've lost friends, I've lost my job, I've been set up. Uh, but how do you find out about that? You don't. You know, and just think about the newspapers in the past couple of months. Uh, in the last couple of months, I've been two death attempts, stalking. Uh, the police reports are right here. Have you heard anything? Of course you haven't. And it all deals with the drug situation. Trying to protect their uh, whatever. But, and, and it's not only just the marijuana or whatever. They don't bring the stuff over with uh, burrows. They bring it at pharmaceuticals, your drugstore, the big ones, Albertsons. Believe me, the CEO, son of Albertsons, set me up. Have you ever heard anything? Have you read the story? No. Set him up. And he's dead. Our investigation hasn't shown that any one of you has any problems with partnership. And I'm talking about organized crime. This administration right here, you have nothing to worry about. We've done a good investigation. There's nothing here on you. But I would seriously have you reconsider your relationship with the Orange Unified School District because that is another matter altogether. Mr. Rocco hosted a public access television program in the 1990s to help expose the partnership and scandal in Santa Ana, California. If your wife or daughter is abducted, you don't know where she is, maybe raped, maybe murdered, and you want to get a handbill out to the neighbors, put them on telephone poles to let everybody know that that person is missing and you want to get a hold of them, can't do it, against the law. On the other hand, if you happen to be one of the two major newspapers in Orange County and you want to drop that paper on my porch, you've got that right. If you look in that section over there, there's no high school students. Uh, if you look in the, over there, there's no board member. If you look over there, there's no board member. And that's because fear, that's what you inspire. When the election results came in, people were shocked. A stream of reporters tried to interview Rocco, including, he says, Katie Corrick, but Rocco turned them all down. District officials tried to meet him, but Rocco ignored them. He also refused to give the district his telephone number or email address, or a picture of him to post on their website or at the district headquarters. District. Mail yeah, sent to him was returned unopened. Like the law requires trustees to be fingerprinted so they can visit the schools, but Rocco refused. The press called him the mystery trustee, and many people questioned if he would even show up to his first board meeting. But show up he did, and on December 9, 2004, the public got its first look at the man they elected to help lead their school district. We're living in a time of secret organizations. We're living in a time of, of corruption and mostly a time of dictatorship. Aiding and abetting the drug and human cargo trade is only part of the problem. You change things here, you change things nationwide. The world is watching. Doing my job as trustee and fighting organized crime are one and the same. You think that you're in heaven, you're in hell. <clears throat> 
children, the infirm, the indigent, the innocent, the defenses. They shouldn't be excuses to make money. I am and have always been the anti-corruption candidate. Io ti amo te caro papà. 9 di novembre era la prima giornata che hai perso questa guerra qua dello partnership. Tutto che io faccio è per te. Over the next three years, Rocco abstained or voted no on virtually all school issues, including such routine matters as the adoption of the minutes, and repeatedly disrupted meetings. He also refused to attend closed sessions, in which sensitive issues regarding students and district personnel are discussed. Please direct your comments to Orange Look, Unified School District. Do this or you're not I'm, I'm not going to let you do it unless it is regard to Orange Unified School District. Excuse me for your guarantee. Uh, you know, let me get through this, all right? Let me get, get through to it. the portion with which uh, so pertains anyway, to Orange so Unified anyway, School District. Uh, San Juan Capistrano wrote a uh, editorial. Mr. Rocco regularly antagonized other trustees and members of the public. Several meetings had to be quickly adjourned if, to avoid a physical fine. confrontation. If, if, this district is run by Kathy Moffitt. Every, every dirty thing which has happened in this district has her Mr. hands Rocco. on it. Hand I'm, I'd face. like to call for the question. Okay. Next time you'll be arrested if you touch me. Gotcha, Kathy. I said jail time, Mr. Mr. Rocco, did you vote yes or no? You don't touch me. You understand that? What? You touch me. You know what? Me. I'm going to recess this meeting. Thank you. If you're bored, you're welcome to leave, Mr. Ortega. Someday tell us about your brother who was employed here. Mr. Rocco, I think you need to be quiet, okay? No, I think I need to keep going. You know, you're not here for the children. I'm not? Don't personalize it. Now you have employees. Now you're talking about a brother of mine who passed away. Is it, wasn't it a drug? No Mrs. Nichols, wasn't it okay, a drug? Mrs. Enough. Nichols, yes, I would Mrs. like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting. In October of 2006, the board censured Mr. Rocco for his unruly conduct. Mr. Rocco, in turn, sued the district for allegedly violating his right to free speech. The lawsuit was summarily dismissed for lack of merit, and the judge ordered Mr. Rocco to reimburse the district $37,000 for attorney's fees and costs. But this was less than the more than $100,000 the district has spent on legal fees. Mr. Rocco is appealing the decision, and the school district is still waiting to be paid as its legal bills continue to climb. Mr. Rocco would later try to put a discussion of the partnership on the agenda. In response, the board majority made it more difficult for trustees to put an item on the agenda that had nothing to do with district business. Citizens soon became furious with Mr. Rocco and let him know so at district meetings. Residents launched a signature gathering effort to have him recalled. Two years ago, our community became the laughing stock when we voted Mr. Rocco into office. We have sat quietly while he rants incoherently about things that are unrelated to running the school district. He is not here for the benefit of the children or our community. Quite frankly, Mr. Rocco, we've had enough of your nonsense. And secondly, you know, every, every, just about every meeting that we have up here, Mr. Rocco is out here running at the mouth. You know, I'm kind of sick and tired of that, so are the parents that are out here. And if it's possible that there are still citizens of Orange who need convincing that Rocco is unfit to serve on this board because of his blatant disregard for the well-being of our children and his undeniable dereliction of duty, I urge them to go to YouTube.com, search Rocco Trustee. There you'll have a front row seat where you'll get to see his circus antics, nonsensical blathering, and paranoid rants. I would love to see the R word, recall. Thank you, Mr. Rosas. I am tonight presenting to Mr. Rocco a notice of intent to recall. Let's talk to Terry Rasmussen, who's trying to get uh, over 11,000 signatures by the 5th of December to put this on the ballot. Thank you. Because you ought to you get some of the video and release it to the television stations. Correct. This is something I think you have to see and hear to believe. It, it's hard to believe it even when you see it. Now, how come you waited two and a half years to start a recall? Turn in over 11,000 valid signatures by December 5th. December 5th is the official date, correct. You've got a lot of concerned people already that support your efforts. Absolutely. And you think you're going to find 11,000? It's good. Yeah, we'll find it. It's just it's a little bit hard over the summer, but we are, um, you know, people, if they come to the door, are happy to sign this. What can we learn from the Rocco fiasco? What's broken in our political system and how can it be fixed? A frequent response is that voters are at fault, that they are apathetic and ill-informed. It's Civics 101. You have uh, the public uh, needs to take a long look in the mirror in the Orange Unified School District and said, how did we let that happen? 
Voters certainly have to do their job, but they are not fully to blame. Citizens need useful information if they are going to cast informed votes. This typically comes from the candidates and the press. For example, in higher profile races, candidates work hard to get their message out. They also challenge their opponents' qualifications and positions. But this takes money, which candidates for low ballot races such as school board typically do not have. Rocco spent less than $1,000 and Phil Martinez less than 6000 This is simply not enough to reach the more than 100,000 eligible voters in the race. Candidates can place a 200-word statement in the ballot guide sent out by the Registrar of Voters. In this election, it cost $2,068. Martinez had a statement in the voter guide. Rocco did not, which probably should have been a clue to voters about the seriousness of Rocco's campaign. The media is another important source of information about candidates. As democracy's watchdogs, we count on the media to bark when something is amiss. However, neither the local TV news programs, the Los Angeles Times, or the Orange County Register had a single story about this school board race. This is a case where the media had a responsibility to, to take another step, to dig a little bit harder. It appeared as though it was another school board race. There's, there's more than a, uh, a dozen school districts in Orange County, and it's impossible for us to cover all of those races. We have three education reporters, and we have reporters in each of the cities. As they look out over the landscape of municipal government and school boards, they're looking for the smoke. In this case, there was no smoke. Another problem is voter fatigue. In addition to the presidency, Congress, state and local offices, voters had to decide 17 ballot propositions on topics such as stem cell research, tribal gaming, and changes to the state's three strikes law. By the time people got down to local races for school board, many were exhausted. And then, when they got to the school board race, the information available to them, the ballot designation, was wrong. Remember, Rocco's ballot designation said he was a teacher, although he was unemployed. Whose job was it to make sure that his ballot designation was accurate? We asked the Registrar of Voters, Mr. Neil Kelly. The main thing that the election code, and that's the statute that I have to go by, says it's your principal vocation, occupation, profession for the last year, for the last 12 months. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you were a paralegal for the last five years, you could list paralegal on your ballot designation you sign a declaration stating that that's the truth. In other words, we're not a policing agency to look into that. So if I said I was a brain surgeon, right. uh, and I put that down, would that go down? Sure, uh, but now here's where it kicks in, is there's a 10-day review period. So people that know you or may not know that you're a brain surgeon could challenge that designation. And they call you up and they say, I'm a, a is not a brain surgeon. They do all the time. And, uh, and what do you do? Well, we refer them to a court. Uh, so, for example, they could file a case in court. It's an emergency hearing, and a judge at that point would make the determination based on evidence. If you came in and were able to prove that you were a brain surgeon, then the court could likely rule in your favor. And so you'd have to hire an attorney to do that? No, you don't. You could represent yourself pro per uh, in court, and that happens all the time. In the case of Orange Unified School District uh, candidate Steve Rocco, whose responsibility was it to challenge? Uh, the veracity of his statement. Anyone in the public? In this election, no one challenged Rocco's ballot designation. Recall activists were unable to gather the 11,000 valid signatures necessary to put the recall question on the ballot of a regularly scheduled election. So they halted the signature drive to spare the district the expense of a costly special election. Other school board watchers say the recall was unsuccessful because it got a late start and because the teachers' union was not actively involved. I'd like to thank you for a two-year dictatorship, uh, which was wonderful. I'd like to thank you for the recall, which was the three women board members up here. And I'd like to thank you for the two attempts on my life, which the media didn't cover. Uh, it didn't matter anyway, because the recall didn't go through. The people have already spoken. If you did not want me here, you had your chance to get rid of me. OK, you had your chance. Let's give you another chance in November. Increasing informed participation is one of the major challenges our political system faces. People are busier than ever before and they need all the help they can get. 
Among the changes that have been suggested are the use of the Internet to disseminate information about local races, having all elections done by mail, reducing the number of elected offices and initiatives on the ballot, and penalties for people who knowingly misrepresent their ballot designations. Having survived the recall, Mr. Rocco will most likely run for re-election in 2008 with the ballot designation Trustee, Orange Unified School District. And this time, his ballot designation will be accurate. As you know, the, re the recall failed. It failed, okay? We still have Rocco. Rocco's gonna be uh, going for maybe another uh, term in November of 2000, you know, end of the year. Might have four more years. Lisa Smith's thing. She sent out her emails to everybody to show up here and say this and say that. You're inspiring fear. You're a bad leader. This is voodoo. This is a voodoo unified school district, and it's because of you. Huh? And uh, you complain that I don't call uh, Mr. Godley doctor. I'm willing to call you doctor. Sure I am. Which Dr. Godley? In the voodoo unified school district. And I'm going to come back and sit there because I have more to say, and I can say it a lot longer there than I can here. And when I'm no longer board member, I'll come back and I'll find a nice seat over here, and I'll sit here and I'll be gadfly number one.